Well, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to another live stream of Let Us Reason. Uh, this is Al Fadi, and with me here, our dear brother Alex Blagajevich, who is uh, Blagajevich. Sorry, I always butcher his name, but he's becoming a household name now. You know, everybody's been waiting for him, and I'm so thankful for that. Uh, uh, wait until you meet him in person. Uh, he is an awesome brother, and what I love about Alex is that he is well connected. With that in mind. I'm gonna ask a tough question right now of Alex. And Alex, this week we lost a dear brother, uh, mm -hmm. Ravi Zacharias, you know, and we uh, praise the Lord for his ministry, for the many lives that has been touched by it. But brother, I ask you uh, if you are open to reflect on your connection with him. And I'll also add about my own connection. So why don't you start with that? Sure, thank you, Alan. It's a pleasure to be with you. I always, always, always look forward when I start the week to be with you and your friends and my friends uh, on this show and so exciting. But uh, yeah, the last couple of days has been, uh, have been very hard for me because uh, Ravi was such, a, uh, such an impactful person in my life. When I first came to Christ in 2003, um, I, uh, I started going from church to church and started seeking the truth. And uh, although I was born again, I didn't know what I believed. So I, w I just wanted the truth. And so I kept going and talking to everyone. Why is, why is Islam true? Why is Christianity true? Why is Buddhism true? Why, why, why? Tell me. And most people <laughs> had not thought of it. <laughs> it just uh, was tradition and uh, family. Uh, but this uh, gentleman I met, I went to a church, Anglican church, doesn't really matter where, uh, but um, uh, what denomination, but uh, in the back of a church, they had an annual festival with, with uh, members of a church having booths, and each booth was about different things. Uh, one was prison ministry, uh, one was uh, uh, Curcio, one, it doesn't matter. But one booth was on apologetics, and I went to have a gentleman and I said, uh, hello, sir, my name is Alex. He said, my name is Richard. We became very good friends. I said, uh, um, What's what's apologetics? So he explained to me what apologetics was, and uh, I said, "You have a lot of material here. What do you suggest I listen to or read?" And he gave me cassettes uh, of uh, Rabbi Zacharias at uh, the Veritas Forum at Harvard University. And uh, I went to in my car and I played the cassettes. And I got to tell you, I listened to those cassettes four to five hours per day. And I could, I didn't want to ever get out of my car. I just wanted to be in my car twenty four seven. I just loved it so much, brother Al, and I just fell in love with uh, with apologetics and with uh, Ravi Zacharias. So uh, it was my goal to meet Ravi, and uh, because I wanted to thank him for having such an impact on my life. So the first time I met him was that uh, he would have summer uh, summer uh, I guess uh, um, uh, forums, uh, one week forums at. Uh, at the uh, Christian college in outside of Chicago. I forgot the name of it, it doesn't matter. And uh, so I went there uh, two years in a row. And the first year I went there, uh, many people were teaching, brilliant people, brilliant apologists, uh, amongst uh, whom uh, John Lennox, my friend John Lennox from Oxford University. And Ravi was coming the last day to teach. So after one week, and although I enjoyed everybody, everybody was so powerful. It just, to me, was like I was waiting for a superstar. I was waiting for a Ravi to come in. And um, and uh, he came in the last day and he, he spoke to us and I asked a question of him. Um, I said, uh, uh, Dr. Zacharias, I said, uh, you, first of all, I want to thank you for, for what you've done and how much you've helped, you've helped me. Uh, and then I asked a question because I'd been struggling, even as a Christian, I'd been struggling because I, didn't understand why God had touched me, my life, and not others. Um, why some people did actually commit suicide and God allowed it, but he saved me from suicide. So it was hard for me. It was hard for me to understand why God had touched me. So I asked him, uh, Ravi, I said, Dr. Zacharias, when you go to India and you see you know, hundreds of thousands of people on the streets and they don't know Jesus, uh, isn't it hard for you at times to say, why, Lord, why me? And then he turned the question around and he say, why not you? So just use that privilege uh, to just um, not ask the question of why me, but rather why not me? And just go and, and then, uh, you know, reach out as many people as you can with the gospel. And, uh, and I just uh, saw him afterwards. We talked and, and uh, he just uh, 
he put his hand, hand around me and I'm not going to tell you, I'm, I'm not going to tell you what compliment he gave me, but it was the greatest compliment ever. And that really boosted, uh, boosted my spirit and boosted my, uh, my um, ministry and my drive to serve the Lord. And uh, so Ravi Zacharias is, uh, is and was and will always be a huge impact in, on my life. And, and um, so he um, just uh, is a brilliant mind, brilliant mind. And just like me, he hated reading, he hated school, he would like sports, just like me. I didn't like books or anything. But when the Lord transforms you, he uses your weaknesses uh, uh, for his glory. And Ravi became one of the greatest speakers uh, of all time. And uh, although uh, there are different styles, and Ravi is not for everyone, he really is, isn't. But uh, but of course, everybody uh, responds differently to different uh, uh, people with different gifts. But Ravi was uh, definitely an amazing, uh, amazing apologist, amazing uh, mind. Amazing person, really sweet man. He talked to you like you were the most important person in the world when he, he met you, and uh, it just it just saddens me. I'm really really sad because I I saw him three months ago. We did an event. A friend of mine uh, did an event in Miami for him. He came in and he had back uh, problems just before his surgery, and uh, talked to him. And I would have never in a million years thought that he would be gone so quickly within three, four months. Uh, I don't remember exactly when it was. I think it was January. So that would have been four months ago. Uh, but I never in my mind would have thought that uh, that um, he would be gone within four or five months. So it's really hard for me. Uh, very, I've, I've been very sad the last couple of days. And that's okay. It's okay to mourn. He's in a better place. So I'm happy for him because he's face to face with the Lord. Um, and there's no suffering, and it's just, uh, it's just, <laughs> there's nothing like being, uh, and I can only think, yesterday I was at someone's house, and they had NBC on, then there was a show called The Voice, um, and I don't watch the show, but, and then all I had been thinking the whole day is the song, I Can Only Imagine, you know, you, I can only imagine seeing Lord face to face, and then that that song came on the, sh on the show, The Voice, and I'm like, whoa, after I'd been thinking the whole day, about that song uh, that uh, it was being played on secular TV. But anyway, I can only imagine what he's experiencing. For his sake, I know he's in a better place, of course. He's with the Lord. But for us, it's a big loss, brother. Yeah, and thank you, brother, for sharing your heart. And I know how much uh, um, you know you are so close, at least, to uh, uh, this type of ministry. And I appreciate you posting also your picture with him. Here's my story with Ravi, actually. I. Uh, the first time I heard of his name actually was uh, in the uh, early 2000s, around like 2004, 2005, the Truth Project. And, uh, you know, uh, he was involved in that and we did a Bible study on that. And then um, I uh, was at a gathering in 2011 in Atlanta and um, we were headed to have dinner. It, it was like a, a walk in distance, but they have an offer. Uh, the hotel offered like a shuttle. You can hop mm -hmm. on a shuttle if you want, or you can walk. As I was walking, I start to hear a voice that is so familiar to me. And mm -hmm. I'm like, where did I hear this voice before? And I turn and it was Ravi walking behind me and talking to someone because you know his voice is so uh, unique. So yes. I introduced myself to him. And obviously, Ravi remembers things in a sharp way. So his my name stuck with him immediately. But he can remember also that I'm involved in a project that he was involved in indirectly. I mean, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. We hopped in a shuttle. And the shuttle took us about 10 minutes to get to the dinner place. But I tell you, those 10 minutes, Ravi Zakarias made me feel that he's known me for 20 years. Yeah, yeah. I mean, seriously. The way mm -hmm. he talked to me, the way he interacted with me. And then we sat down and he did the, uh, you know, few minutes meditation. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing how the brother is so uh, amazing and his knowledge is just impressive. He would close his eyes and he would share, you know, from the word of God. And uh, and then we, uh, the night was over. I shook his hand and he says, we will be in touch. To be honest with you, I took that as just a nice compliment. You know, I didn't think much of it. A year and a half later, Ravi's team was in touch. I mean... Mm -hmm. He made good in his word. And I don't want to get into details as to what I'm doing with that ministry. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's amazing, brother. And uh, I am privileged also to know the new president. He's a friend of mine as well. So um, it's an amazing ministry. It's a powerful worldwide ministry. I mean, uh, Ravi was invited to go to the Mormon 
uh, you know, temple in yeah. uh, in Salt Lake City. Mm -hmm. Ravi's invited many times to the UAE to meet yeah. with uh, dignitaries and things like so. So the Lord has used the brother uh, to testify about him in front of governors and authorities, yeah. and, and yeah. we're so thankful uh, mm -hmm. that um, you know we have warriors like him. He's in a better place, no doubt. We are going to miss him. But uh, it's just for a short time, brother. And, and yes. that's our invitation to those who are here who do not know the Lord. Yes. If you want to be spending eternity with the best uh, leader ever, that's our Lord Jesus Christ, the best uh, uh, King of Kings, the best Lord of Lords, um, uh, believing in Christ is the only way. Other than that, unfortunately, I cannot really express to you how saddened we will be that you won't be joining that, you know, the, uh, the wedding feast uh with the the you know the bridegroom so uh, with that said brother um we're gonna resume now getting back into your book and the amazing uh, discussions that you have in there very short book very simple but very powerful in its content which has to do with why you trust the bible and that's why i'm, I'm laboring this all the time why we trust the bible and you've been given reasons and i think we finished 12 so far 12 Halfway. reasons, i should say uh so feel free to repeat any of it and feel free to take it from here. And I want to just give a, a big shout out to all of you here, especially to, uh, you know, those who come all the time. Thank you, Mary. Uh, thank you, uh, Anne. Uh, thank you, Gedalia. Thank you, Viv. Thank you, Vivian. My cup is bigger than yours, just to let you know, Vivian. And uh, thank you to all of you, of course. Thank you to uh, our amazing moderators as well. And just to let uh, Fred, you know, thank you, peace to you, brother. And uh, I don't know, I, I don't see uh, Mariana and, uh, and others, but hopefully they'll join us later. By the way, folks, uh, I just uh, wanted you to know that one of the ways you can now contribute and support us is through the super chats, just to let you know, because it's been approved just a couple of days ago. Hmm. With that says, brother, I'll turn it over to you. Uh, what is the next reason why yes. we as believers should believe in the Bible? Yes, so I'm gonna get into reason 13. Last week we finished with uh, uh, reason 12, which is the skeptic's uh, reason for not believing it. Uh, for not believing in the Bible and the resurrection of Christ. And I couldn't believe how silly those reasons were. They're absolutely ridiculous. I thought they would be very strong from people who have uh, PhDs in, in, uh, in, in, uh, in biblical uh, studies. Uh, but those reasons were really silly. Um, I also wanted to mention before getting 13 very quickly that uh, also my, my very dear friend Nabil uh, had the greatest privilege of being the right hand of uh, Ravi Zacharias. And, um, and that was such a privilege. And uh, even though it was a short period of time, uh, he, uh, he was such, so honored to be part of RZIM and to write his book, uh, Seeking Allah, Finding Jesus. So that was also quite a privilege for him and to have my friend be part of such a great ministry. Uh, so now we move on to uh, uh, reason number 13. And number reason 13, uh, I called it the personal transformation that Jesus brings to people. Because uh, yes, you could claim that uh, that Islam brings a transformation to uh, uh, to uh, to believers. You could claim that Buddhism, Hinduism, but there's nothing, absolutely nothing, like the transformation that Jesus brings to people. He can take the most rotten, rotten, evil person, a murderer, a drug addict, a, a criminal, uh, a uh, a pimp, anything you can name it. Uh, and it can transform the, the, uh, that person from inside out. And he did it with me. He did it with you. I don't know how you were before uh, you came to Christ, but I know I had. Uh, I was so far away from God, and I just hated the idea of a, of a creator, of God. Uh, I'm not Christians. And uh, so the transformation that, that Jesus brings into the lives of, uh, of people. For example, when I meet uh, Muslims, radical Muslims, who, um, and I meet them all the time, we met some of them together when I meet them and they were radical Muslims and uh, they, uh, you know, and then they, they meet the uh, risen Jesus who transforms their hearts from a heart of stone to a heart of flesh. Uh, they uh, become different, completely different people. Uh, they were so zealous, like Paul was zealous uh, for the law and for God. He thought he loved God and Muslims believe they love God, radical Muslims but they don't understand that they are far from God. They, uh, I was teaching a few days ago on the book of Job and how Job uh, himself 
was a righteous man. He thought he was righteous, blameless. He would not sin with his lips. He would not sin with his actions. He thought he had it all figured out. So when he suffered, he didn't quite understand why he was suffering because he thought that if he's righteous, that if you do A, you receive B. Uh, if you do this, uh, it's like God becomes uh, some, somehow, uh, to use a term that uh, I heard someone else use, uh, God becomes a spiritual vending machine. So you put a coin in and then you, you expect to receive something from him. Uh, so a lot of people think they, have, they are in righteous standing with God uh, because they are obedient to God. But they don't understand that a lot of people um, know about God. Uh, and uh, we, we theologians can fall into that sometimes. We know a lot about God, but we don't know God. So uh, once we meet the reason Christ, we realize that um, it is not about being a good person. It's about knowing Jesus, but about being known by him and about having a personal relationship with him. Because once you do that, then it takes away all that um, uh, burden on of sh your shoulders and it just transforms you from within inside out as my friend Said in France says religion washes the outside uh, and but uh, uh, Christianity Christ uh, washes the inside it, it will transform you from the inside out and then of course of course after that you will do good deeds naturally with a new heart because your desires will be different and uh, you will understand that it's all by gr God's grace and not by your own work. So uh, the transformation, and most of uh, radical Muslims I meet and radical Jews that I meet, for instance, uh, suddenly uh, when they're put in the same room, there's no more hatred anymore. They just start loving on each other and their brothers and sisters and they hug each other. And uh, how many times, I can't tell you how many times I've seen either with my own eyes or seen indirectly or heard indirectly of Muslims, radical Muslims who hated the Jews and who met the risen Christ. And the first thing they wanted to do, and I can attest personally of cases, uh, the first thing they wanted to do is go and find a Jew, hug him and say, I'm sorry that I've hated you so much in my heart. Um, and uh, so the transformation that Christ brings into uh, someone's heart is uh, like nothing else. And only if, uh, when you've experienced it, uh, like I have experienced it, that love that Christ has for us and the relationship he has and the, the Holy Spirit power that comes into the heart of a believer, new believer, until we ex you experience that, you have no idea what Christianity is like. You have no idea. It, it's just like any other religion. It's about doing good. That's why it's so hard for people to... Uh, to, to, to accept what you and I are talking about, that one is true, one is false, because they look at the, the peripheral um, uh, teachings of Christianity and uh, Islam, and they see that basically they're the same religions, they're about prayers and fasting and doing good deeds and giving alms and things of that nature. So they look on, you know, for somebody who's not really born again or not really interested in, in fundamentals, really digging into the truth, um, it's, it looks like the same thing, we're just splitting airs. But when you really go uh, get down to it, you realize that you know there's no comparison. There's nothing like Jesus. There's nothing like the message of the Bible. There's nothing like the personal relationship with Christ and the transformation that he brings in the heart of a new believer. There's nothing like it. And I would like, I would love to, for you to add something to that, you know, to uh, this personal transformation that Christ brings in your life and the life of others around you. Absolutely, brother. I mean, of course, uh, I mean, uh, first of all, uh, the passage that brought me down to my knees after being witness to for 12 years was a very simple passage. Matthew 5, 44, love your enemies mm -hmm. and pray for those who persecute you. Yes. Uh, so that passage made me realize why did these people love me that much? Why did they witness to me over and over again, despite the fact that I shunned them off, despite the fact that I ridiculed their argument, despite the fact that I made it difficult for them, that they still have patience with me on love. That takes a lot of effort, by the way, to love your enemy. It's not an easy thing. Okay, so who changes you to do this? Of course, Second Corinthians 5.17 tells us this. If anyone is in Christ, Amen. he is a new creation. Behold, the old has passed away, the new has come. And by the way, the Greek is powerful. A new creation means that this is something new, and actually it's applied to something that is unused. I don't know about you, brother, but I don't like to have used stuff usually. I mean, I'm very careful. I love my stuff, you know, to be unused. 
and then I like it to be taken care of, you know, and all that kind of stuff. But that doesn't even match how the Lord changes you. Yes. You are in Christ and you person like haven't been touched before. It's almost like starting creation all over again. The uh, Behold, the old has gone, meaning died, literally died, perished, vanished. It's no longer there. How often, brother, do we feel like, man, I wish I wish this attitude goes away. I wish this habit goes away. Well, guess what? The Lord in a snap can do that for you if you're yes. willing to, of course, to collaborate with him. So so to me, absolutely, seeing the changes from within that happened to me when I accepted Christ was another powerful testimony to me because I started to realize what is happening with me is a real transformation. You know, it's not just a, an emotional thing. It's not like I was excited for a moment. No, no, it's obvious that it was deep from within. I mean, we can change from the outside, by the way. People yes. can fake it from the outside. But there is no way you can fake the inside nope. if the Holy Spirit is in you. So absolutely, brother, I agree with you. Yes. And that's and one of the most powerful testimonies that Jesus says. One of the marks of Christians is to love one another, to love your neighbors as yourself, and to love your enemies. Yes. Amen. I mean, you're absolutely right. Uh, uh, that that the transformation. Uh, I when I look at my life, brother Al, uh, to me there are two 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 parts. You know how we say BC and AD. Well, same in my life. There's before Christ and after Christ. Now there's two Alexes, and they're two completely different people. Completely different people. Of course, people who uh, on on the, some people may say you have known me a long time. They say no, Alex. You know, yeah, you're a little little too religious now, but you were a good guy before. I'm like, you know what? I was a good guy on the outside, but everything I did, uh, you know, I did it because it was calculated, you know, and uh, you didn't know my heart and I was a good salesperson. So uh, I was hiding uh, my true intentions, uh, but it was calculated. And when Jesus transformed my heart, I was a new person. And that's why Paul can say, think, think about it this way. I always say to people, when you're far away from Christ, you will always, uh, the gospel will mean, will be foolish to you. Be, why? Because the farther you are from Christ, the more you will believe you're a good person. It's, it's so easy to think you're a good person when you're lost. Uh, but once you're, you're, you have Christ in you, then the light shines in you and then you realize who you truly are in Christ and outside of Christ. And then you realize uh, what a wretched, wretched sinner, wretched person you were before and how fooled you were by the enemy to think that you're a good person. Think about it this way. I don't know if I used this analogy before, but uh, uh, I, always think, I always think of uh, the transformation as, um, as, as seeing yourself in the true light, when you have pimples on your face and you go to the bathroom to look at the mirror, to look at your pimples, if you close the door and you don't turn on the light, well, the pimples don't look so bad. Well, actually, everything looks the same. It's all dark. You just can't see them, right? But if you want to see your imperfections on your face, you just turn on the light, the switch on. And once you the switch is on, you start seeing the imperfections in your, in your face. Same thing with Christ. Once... You, when you're lost, when you don't have Christ's light in you, then you think you're a good person. And we all think, used to think that. I used to think I was the greatest of all people, honestly. I thought I was not only the most, one of the most moral people ever, but I used to think that I was smarter than even the moral people because I was smart enough not to get caught. So I was smart to, be, you know, to, to give the impression of being a, a moral person plus being a moral person. So I was like above everybody else. Um, so I was just so fooled, uh, by the enemy, but once I met Christ and once he came in my life, I realized what a wretched sinner I was. And that's why Paul, which I find to be so funny when, uh, when there, I watched a debate, uh, between Michael, Dr. Michael Brown and, and the Jewish rabbi and the Jewish rabbi said, look, why would I want to become a Christian? Even Paul said, you know, that he used to be, you know, uh, you know, blameless according to the law. And then once he becomes a Christian, say, I do the things I don't want to do and I don't do the things I want to do. So you want me to become a Christian and go from being blameless to suddenly doing the things I don't want to do and not doing the things I don't want to do. So see how twisted that is, brother? Basically saying that when you become a Christian, you become a worse person. No, you don't. You become a better person, but you realize that you're not a good person. And, and what drives me 
is that I am being used by the Holy Spirit, even though, despite myself, I, and despite my uh, human nature, God is gracious, is loving, and is using me, despite the fact that I don't deserve any of it. It's all by God's grace. So it is, it is powerful uh, the, to experience that transformation. And once you experience it, and when God changes your heart, there's nothing like it. Nothing like it, and that's my prayer for our uh, our friends who are watching, uh, who are not believers, where they're whether they're you know agnostics, agnostic uh, atheists, uh, Muslims, Buddhists, it doesn't really matter. I just pray that they come to a personal relationship with Christ because once they have Jesus in them, in them, let me tell you, when I met Jesus, I was so upset, and you know why I was so upset, uh, Al? Besides being upset at people who did not preach the gospel to me, I was upset that I was 31 and I met Christ, that I had not met Christ when I was 14. I was so upset. But guess what? Today, looking back, I'm glad I came to Christ at 31 because all the things between 0 and 31, all of my life, all of the mistakes, God turned into a blessing. You know, I, don't, I cannot explain it, but all of that, uh, you know, I was able to really learn from it and really be a better person because I realized I had been in darkness. I had been like the prodigal son, you know, I like to say uh, in the prodigal son, he really should be called the prodigal sons. And the reason is because we always think of a hedonist, the, the son that goes away and uh, in debauchery as the prodigal son. But we never, we never talk about the moralist, the son who stays behind, who thinks he's above everybody else and who deserves God's grace, right? And when, when the son comes back, he thinks that, uh, uh, that the son, uh, that his brother doesn't deserve God's grace is the Father's grace, but he who was perfect, blameless, and was with the Father. So we never mentioned the, 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 the other sins, which is not, you know, it's easy to see the sin of debauchery, but it's not easy to see the sin of, of being a moralist. And that is so dangerous because it's so hard to convince somebody who's right by the law, who thinks he or she is right by the law, like a Muslim or even a Christian who thinks they're righteous because they do good. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I met Christians uh, who doesn't, didn't appear, they were born again, but who would tell me uh, that they were, they're good people because they've been Catholics for their whole life, or they've been Orthodox for their whole life, or they've been, you know, Protestant, and they're, 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 they've been pastors, and all that, somehow as if they were righteous uh, on their own, and that's, that is absolutely flawed. Uh, it is only by the grace of God that we, uh, we are saved. And it's a beautiful once you come to that transformation. So my prayer is that for all of those who don't know Jesus, please come to Jesus. Give your life to, to over to the Lord, because I promise you, the moment you're, bo you're transformed by the Holy Spirit, you will never regret it. And because it's the greatest relationship ever, and you will only get better in this life and the next life. Of course, once you're with Jesus, uh, then it gets even better, like Ravi is experiencing right now. Absolutely. Um... You know, there was a question here by a funny guy. His name is Sinbad. Um, I don't know if Sinbad is uh, being serious or not. He was saying that in the book of Isaiah, the word boldness is a curse. And uh, this is, by the way, applies uh, to what we're talking about, uh, the Bible. And one of the things that I discovered that people um, unfortunately commit this uh, fallacy is to take one verse out of its context. Now, um, if you're mocking my boldness, I'm proud of it, by the way. But if you're talking about what does the boldness mean, that it's a curse in the book of Isaiah, chapter 3, verse 24, that's what you're referring to, by the way, mm -hmm. has to do with the judgment on Judah. And guess mm -hmm. what? You have to read things in context. Number two. Yeah. That judgment was fulfilled almost 100 years later when Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, came and destroyed Jerusalem and they took people into exile. So what a beauty it is indeed that you brought this up because the Lord was telling his people, if you don't return back to me, this is what's going to happen. And one of it yeah. is instead of having good hair, you're going to be bold. It's almost like the Lord is mocking them and saying, you know, you're going to be destroyed from the inside out, technically speaking. So okay. that's an example of how you can read the Bible in context. And context doesn't mean just that passage, that just that page, sometimes the whole book, sometimes the whole section of the Bible, Old Testament, mm -hmm. sometimes the entire Bible to see how it was fulfilled. Yes, and, and sometimes, yeah, no, uh, uh, very good, Al. Uh, thank you for that explanation. Also, you have to look at the words because sometimes words have different meanings. For example, tr uh, to uh, there is uh, w when I came to Christ, uh, the Lord put on my heart 
to 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 put him to the test and i'm like i'm like to put him to a test so i started looking in the bible and i'm like uh it says do not put the lord <laughs> to a test so i'm like how can it be then it's not from god you know how can god be asking me to test him not to put him to test to test him and then i realized there are two words for test in the bible one is a negative connotation which is do not put the uh, lord to the test so for example how many times I'm, i've heard um uh, good people say well if god will do this for me i'll put my faith in him that is a negative that is putting god to the test and god does not appreciate that at all so god if i can just get this job i promise you i promise you i'll give my life to you no that is uh that is uh, uh the wrong way to go about with god you don't you don't you don't test god in that way uh you should put your life uh in, in christ not because he's gonna uh, not unless he does something for you but because he is the truth and the, and the way in the life but in the old testament there is another uh word for uh, test and uh, it is a positive one and that is uh, god is asking people to, to to test him and to to test him and to see how good he is and that is different completely different for example if i'm in a situation and it looks like uh there's no way out i'm gonna test god not you know put him to the test but i'm gonna say god looks like there's no way out here and there's no solution for me you know what i'm gonna trust you here i'm gonna give it in your hands and i know you're gonna do something with it and guess what he always does and uh, so that is a positive one uh, so you have to be careful when you use words you know you have to not only put the verse into context you also have to look at the word what it means also um, and the same is true in islam we would never want to take a word out of context and say you know uh, and then put our meaning into the word you have to put the meaning uh, of the commentaries muslim I islamic commentaries into the what the word actually meant so uh, so this right yeah, absolutely, so, brother. And I, I want to yeah. use this as an example, by the way, the word salvation. Uh, in fact, when, when I was in seminary, that's one of the words that the professors will ask you to do a study on it. Yes. Do you know how many words you'll find that says save or to save or saved, for instance? Tons of them. But unless you put it in context, you're not going to understand if it is physical uh, salvation or if yeah. it is spiritual salvation. True. True. And that's yeah. one of the ways we can look at the Quran. Find me a single verse in the Quran that says you're saved spiritually. Mm -hmm. It was used of the of Moses and the Israelites to save them from what? When yeah. they're crossing yeah. basically the Red Sea. So, so mm -hmm. this is how you can learn also about how the word is applied and how it is used in the immediate context and how does how does it correlate to other passages in the bible that's the beauty about our, uh, our the word of god brother our bible absolutely absolutely 100 percent. all right brother you want to go to uh, you this is number 13 that you covered uh, yeah. I'm, I'm glad uh, 13 is behind us uh let's move on hey by the way speaking of 13 i have a funny story to tell everybody many of okay. you know that i am i have a master's in construction so I was a project manager, oh, yeah. and I, later a construction manager. Mm -hmm. I, I managed, uh, by the grace of God, a number of projects. One of those was a high-rise, a hotel, actually, uh, in Las Vegas before I was saved, of course. I was, you know, worldly, and I was working on these kind of things all the time. And I discovered that there was no 13th floor in the drawings, and I sent a request to the, uh, uh, to the architect saying, hey, man, you missed the floor. And they came back with a laugh. It's like, no, it's intentional, because in yeah. Las Vegas, they don't like no number 13 apparently so. yeah. yeah it's true and and uh, my understanding is uh every every hotel i've been in new york city doesn't have a 13th floor they they have 12 they have 14 but they, they don't have 13 so yeah, a bunch so, of superstitious yeah. people man. of course it's probably superstitious and uh uh so but uh but that is funny so maybe i'll just skip uh uh 13 and just you know we went from 12 <laughs> to 14 so now i'm moving to 15 no just kidding <laughs> So, yeah, go ahead, um, brother. so, but, uh, uh, so number 14 is, uh, the message of grace. And, uh, uh, that is also unique to Christianity. And, uh, uh, we've mentioned it and grace, the definition of grace is unmerited favor. So where else, uh, show me any other, uh, religion, faith, uh, tradition, uh, besides the gospel, uh, where, uh, where we are, uh, we, where the message of grace is is uh, is prevalent, uh, nowhere, because uh, we the message of grace in the Bible is so powerful. Because it's a, such a gift, 
And um, uh, I like to use in, in, I don't know if I use it in the book or not, but uh, I love what John Lennox, Dr. John Lennox from, uh, from uh, Oxford University, uh, where he explained, and I don't know if I've explained it on your show bef before or not, and if I have, I'm sorry, brother, but uh, I love what he says. Oh, he no, says, please uh, repeat it, brother. It's okay. Thank you. I love it. I love it. He says that, you know, that uh, when he met his wife, and it, well, I think it's like 50 years ago or so, um, when he met her, he said, imagine if I went to her. I liked her. I liked her a lot. But imagine if I went to her and I wanted to date her and we started dating and then I went to her, to her with a list of 50 things. And I said, listen, I forgot what her name is, Sally or something like that. He, he said, uh, listen, uh, I would like you to keep every single one of those 50 commandments, 50, 50 things you have to do for me, day in, day out, week in, week out, month in, month out, year in, year out. And when you do those things for the next 50 years, then I'll let you know if you're good enough, if I'll accept you or not, and then maybe we can get married. Um, he said, if I did that, she would say goodbye. Sayonara, right? Hasta la vista, hasta luego. Uh, and uh, so it just, that's not how we, we ever deal in any relationship. And yet, and yet every single religion teaches that, exactly that. And Islam is no different. Islam is no different. You do all these things, you pray five times a day, you do all the alms, you do all these things, you do Ramadan, you don't eat pork, you don't do this, you don't, 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 do, 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 do. And then, and then when you die, hopefully, God is merciful, Allah is merciful, and then he admits me into paradise. That is not the way uh, we work in any relationship, and that's not how Christianity works either. So the message of grace is simple, is that we mer merit, we deserve hell. We don't deserve any blessing. Everything we have, and there's something called common grace. Common grace is grace that everybody receives, whether you're saved or not. There's something called common grace. And I don't talk about that in my book. There's something common grace. When somebody who is not a believer, who hates God, wakes up and breathes, that is common grace. Because God does not owe it to him to that this person would breathe, would walk, would see, would think, would make money, would have a house. All of those things uh, is by God's grace. If God just says no more, you're gone. If God calls you home, whether you're Christian or non-Christian, if God calls you home, like he called Ravi home, you're going. You're going. There's nothing you're going to do. Uh, doctors can't save you. If God calls you home, you're going. When it's time, your time, it's your time. So there's such a thing as common grace. That's for everybody. Seven billion people. But it's something, uh, it's, 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 uh, it's salvific grace. And that is grace that, that saves. And that is God doing it. That's God's work, not our work. We cannot save ourselves. We can only send ourselves to hell. So how do we receive grace? We just accept what God did for us that we don't deserve. And that's why it's so hard for people to accept it because they always feel like they have to deserve something, right? I have to, I have to work to deserve my salary, right? I have to work to get uh, money, to get paid. But that is not how, how uh, God works. He gave his son freely. He knew that we could not save ourselves. And he gave us uh, salvation freely. And the Bible says one of my favorite verses and it's funny because every verse is my, one of my favorite verses, but I love this verse. It says, freely you have received, freely you shall give. So when I give of myself, when I help people and do things for people, of course, people always think there's, I have something in the back of my mind most of the time. I don't. I just love to give because God gave 100% of himself to me when I deserve it the least. When I deserved hell, when uh, Paul says I was a, an enemy of God, not just separated from God, an enemy of God. He pursued me and he came and died for me. That's grace. That's a gift that, um, that we have received. And uh, for Ephesians uh, tells us, to, Ephesians 2.8, let me read it. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. Um, and this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. So there's you no be any clearer way. than that, brother. You can't get any clearer than that, right? There's no boasting possible. Because if I deserve hell and God gives me heaven, not by what I did, but what I, he did for me, how can I boast? 
let me ask let me tell you an example let's say you have debt and you cannot get out of it you just can't get out of it you will never get out of it and i come and i completely wipe uh wipe out and all of your debt i just wipe it off wipe you know and i paid all all off for you um and and you have believe it or not you have two two ways you can respond to it you can actually say no you could say no and then it won't happen uh but you could say yes and then how would you perceive me for the rest of your life except if i say i'm doing this for you but but then you're going to pay me for no that's not grace grace is i'm doing this for you and you owe me nothing nothing absolutely nothing i hope you're grateful and i think you would be grateful if you were if you uh if you didn't think you deserved it but if you honestly knew you were, had no way out all you you the only way for you was more debt more uh, problems more suffering more um i can use also the example of you drowning if you're drowning and you're gonna die and i come and jump and save your life or your child's life you know i think you'd be grateful for the rest of your life and that's what the gospel is the gospel is god saving us despite ourselves um is uh it's the most beautiful message ever told uh and unless you understand your true nature un un uh, unless you understand that you are an enemy of god unless you understand that it is a free gift and that you cannot earn it all you will do is boast because you will think that you're better than your neighbor, you're praying more than your neighbor, you're better than your neighbor, you're better than this, better than that. You're always gonna compare yourself to other people and think that, hey, I'm okay, I'm better than my neighbor. When you realize that we're all in the same bo uh, boat, that we're all wretched sinners and there's no way out for us, only hell, and that God sent his son to pay the price we deserve on the cross and he gives freely and all he's asking us to, to do is accept that gift and he just gladly gives and we all he wants us is to say thank you and amen thank you and amen and every day we should be on our knees all day long we should be going through life be having a heart of gratitude because i don't know how some christians i would just wonder sometimes and i don't mean to be rough but sometimes i i wonder how christians can be arrogant really because how can you be arrogant when you all you have received is by the grace of god that you're saved by the grace of god i don't know how you can be uh how you can boast in yourself or how you can be arrogant amen brother amen and um uh, you know you're absolutely correct and and i love the fact that uh, ephesians 2 8 and 9 emphasize work because i remember boasting mm -hmm. about me going to mecca boasting about doing extra prayers boasting about fasting more i yeah. mean to the point that everybody starts to look at you as if like you are this spiritual guru that they're yeah. gonna need to go and talk to and uh, you know i love it when the lord in the sermon amount says you know do not boast basically about your fasting yeah. or you're praying okay. or any of the things that you're doing and that opened my eyes immediately realizing that the lord was rebuking me for the yeah. things that i used to do now another interesting thing uh of course uh, when it comes to that is i want to ask my muslim friends here uh, who are watching you're mm -hmm. emphasizing the idea that you want to do good deeds that will basically wash away or reduce the impact of your bad deeds let me ask you this question it's a logical question adam and eve they committed one sin let me repeat again one sin are you telling me adam and eve did not do any good deeds before that mm -hmm. one sin mm -hmm. for the sake of arguments let's say yeah. they did one good deed which one mm -hmm. counted in the presence of allah it mm -hmm. was the one one bad deed yep. and they were kicked out now yep. you're gonna come back and tell me well the quran says they, they were forgiven good for you how come they're not back again Yep. so you see you have to think about it this way Absolutely. yet you are risking your life thinking that i'm gonna get before allah one day and i'm gonna hope for the best assuming yep. of course allah exists yep. i don't believe allah exists at all he's just an idol he's mm -hmm. just an imaginary god in your head but nevertheless you're not gonna see allah you're gonna see the real judge the yep. real just judge the real lord the one that will judge you the one that will separate the mm -hmm. sheep from the goats, the one that will say, come and inherit the kingdom of my father, and they're gonna tell the others to go to eternal damnation. I mean, that's what I'm worried about for you. And I ask you, of course, to consider what the Lord has done for you. While we're still sinners, yeah. Christ died for us. That's what Amen. the scripture says. Amen. And uh, um, we sometimes people, 
uh, and Christians do it too. They say, uh, "How could how can a good God send people to hell?" As of as if somehow, as if somehow it's God sending people to hell. As if somehow God is like, "Yes, one more in hell, Hallelujah." No, it's not how it works. It's if you understand your human nature, you understand where you're coming from, how wretched you are, and we're all wretched. We're all fallen. Even we born again Christians were fallen, and we will fall. And we will sin. We, we don't want to, uh, but as long as we're in the flesh, we are imperfect. And, uh, and that's why a system was built, for example, in America by the founding fathers. And the only reason, listen to me, folks, the only reason America is richer and more powerful and more, more free and doing so well is because the founding fathers of this country understood human nature. That's the only reason. So they put in place checks and balances and things because they understood all you need is one bad leader. And let's say if you're a Democrat, you will agree with me that if you're a Democrat, you think Donald Trump is a bad leader. And if you're a Republican, you think that Obama was a terrible leader. So if you're a Democrat and Trump has too much power, way too much power, he will destroy this country. If you're a Democrat, if you're a Republican, and you give Obama all power, he will destroy this country, uh, if you, if you, as far as you're concerned. So, it's only when you understand human nature, and doesn't matter, doesn't matter, any church, any is, uh, uh, mosque, any religion, any leader who starts well, if he's given too much power in the flesh, will fall because of his human nature. That is the problem. I want to end this point with uh, something, a story that happened to me, Al, which I oh, think... Oh, no, we're, we're still fine, brother. We're still fine. Thank you. you, know, you. Know, we still have... A I think it's a, thank, you. thank you, Al. It's a beautiful story. Um, it was one of those Holy Spirit moments. I, would, I went to a debate, a brother of mine, dear brother of mine, also former Muslim, uh, Pastor Reza Safa from Iran. He was debating an imam and, uh, at a local church here where I live. And um, they were debating, and I said, Pastor Reza, well, please, whatever you need, I'll help you before the debate, during the debate, after the debate. So he told me, would you uh, be at my stand and, and try to sell some of my stuff? I said, of course, Pastor Reza. So before the, the, the debate, I was there at the stand, and there were two Muslim brothers. They came, and they were looking and looking and looking. And the Lord put on my heart to, to give them whatever they wanted. And I said, I said, listen. Um, anything that's on this table, whatever you want, it's my gift to you. And there was some stuff that was like two hundred dollars, and it, it didn't matter to me. I just uh, the Lord I put it on my heart, and that's what I want to do. So I said, please, anything you want, uh, you can have it. He's like, thank you so much, thank you. One was speaking, the other one was quiet, and he said, thank you, thank you, uh, no, thank you. And he kept looking, looking. I said, one more time, I'll just let you know. If there's anything you want before, during, after, you just come pick it up and I'll, 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 it's my gift to you. And he said, thank you very much, but if I took it, it wouldn't be fair because I would turn around and throw it in the garbage. I said, okay, then fine, I, I, I respect you. So debate uh, was uh, you know, a couple hour debate. And then after debate, I saw the two of them. I said, how did you like the debate? And uh, the one who had spoken to me said, came to me said, it was a good debate. He said, but I have a question. Did Jesus die for me? I said, yes, he did. He died for you. He said, awesome. Then I'll remain Muslim. Because if Islam is true, I go to paradise. Hopefully. And, but if, he, if Christianity is true, you just told me Jesus died for me. So I'm okay. I cover all my bases. And then I had that Holy Spirit moment. Like, I don't want to say like never before, but it was powerful. It was really powerful and all, all glory to God because it was his moment, not mine. I didn't know what to say. And then the Holy Spirit came to me and I said, do you remember you came to the table before the debate and I told you you could have any, anything you wanted? Was my gift there for you? And he said, yes. Yeah, I wanted to give it to you, right? And it would have cost you nothing, right? So my gift was there for you. Yeah, 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 yeah. What did you say? Oh, I was not interested. And what did you say later on? Um, oh, I said that I would uh, throw it in the garbage. I said, yes. So although my gift was there for you, it was not yours. You had to accept it in order to be yours. 
I said, yes, Jesus did die for you on the cross. But because you're not accepting it with your heart and with your mouth, confessing with your mouth and accepting with your heart that he died for you, it is not yours. You're throwing it in the garbage. Therefore, it is not, you're not saved. You can only be saved if you accept the gift. And then he looked at me and was perplexed and he wanted to argue. But while he was perplexed to thinking about what he was going to say, the brother, I, I thought I was preaching to the, to the one who had loud mouth. The brother said, wow, that makes so much sense. Now I get it. <laughs> the Muslim brother. And then praise, it, praise was, the Lord. it was such a powerful moment. It was awesome. But again, to understand, yes, God died for us. Yes, it's a gift. Yes, it's an unmerited gift. But of course, you have to accept it. Unless, unless you accept it, it's not yours. And yes, God will have to send you into eternal punishment uh, and separation from God, not because he's evil, but because we are evil, because we don't deserve. And you mentioned that um, about uh, uh, doing one bad deed and all that. James talks about that. He says, if you break one uh, law, you've broken the whole law. So if, you know, that's why the Judaizers were so scared so scared of breaking one law because they're so scared uh, that they would be going to be found unrighteous in the uh, eyes of God. Uh, but I wanted to mention a story because it is a powerful story, I think, for people to understand that it is a gift, but you have to accept it. You can't, you can't, um, you can't uh, just say, well, you died for me and that's good enough. No, it's not good enough. You have to accept it with your heart and, and not just say it because a lot of people uh, I don't like those churches that say, well, we had last week, we had, you know, 2,000 people came, uh, they were saved. No, you don't know that, how many were saved. A lot of people confessed with their mouth, but you don't know if they were saved. So people, 2,000, actually, I don't like when people confess and then they go on giving a bad image to Christianity. I would rather them not confess it if they're not going to be born again. Keep your mouth shut until you actually really mean it and you're truly born again but that's okay that's a different story but again um the, you have to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart it has to be true transformation it has to be true confession not just saying repeat words like uh, like the shahada you know and become a muslim it doesn't work that way it has to be genuine Amen, brother. Amen. Uh, and by the way, I want to thank all of you uh, again, uh, moderators and those who are attending. And uh, this will be a weekly thing with our uh, dear brother. Uh, so mark your calendars every Wednesday at the exact same time, unless things change. But it will be at 6 p.m. New York time, 11 p.m. London time. And, uh, uh, you know, another thing, thank you for those who gave through Super Chat. By the way, I appreciate you. One thing, brother, do you remember when we were in, in uh, Brussels and someone came to tell us... Uh, he needs a sign remember and he yeah. says unless i have a sign you know i am not really yet ready to accept christ and we talked to him we talked to him and then i asked him i said so by the way what is your name and remember what he says his name is eunice and immediately by the prompting of the holy spirit i said your name in english is jonah and Jesus talked about a sign, like the sign of Jonah. And, and yeah. then we shared with him after that. And I'm telling him, look, the Lord has given you the sign already that you're yeah. asking for. But, you know, sometimes the heart of man is a little bit different, you know. Sometimes people feel like they still want one more. I mean, that's yeah. that's the beef that Jesus had with the, with the Pharisees and the Jews. Yeah. They kept yeah. asking for more signs, for more signs. And I love what he said to them in, in John 6, that you're not following me really about signs. You're following me because I fed you earlier okay. and you want to eat more but i yeah. am the bread of life i am the real manna that came down from heaven Amen. and that's jesus's invitation to all of you he says unless you believe that i am he you will die in your amen. sins amen well brother amen. you want to cover one more or do you yes, want to one keep, more. Uh, no let's do one let's do one more it's, it's not gonna be too long uh hopefully <laughs> um but uh i, I do want to mention something uh, about science uh, yes, a lot of times people are asking for signs and are, are putting God to the test and it's, gen it's not genuine. Um, they're just saying, God, do this for me and I believe in you. But sometimes, sometimes, to be fair, it is genuine. Uh, so it is somebody who's truly struggling and somebody who really, truly wants the Lord and who really would like a sign. And God, I believe, will honor that. Because if you're truly genuine and you're truly, sometimes uh, I talk to Muslims and they say, really, I want a sign, please. I say, well, go home and just get on your knees and say, Lord Jesus, if you truly are Lord. And, but you have to believe it. You have to believe, not that he is Lord, but believe that you, you, you do want the truth, you know, if you truly want the truth, get on your knees and say, Lord Jesus, um, Jesus, 
because we don't believe he's Lord. But Jesus, if you are truly Lord, and if you truly died for me on the cross, and you want a personal relationship with me, uh, uh, please, I beg you, I beg you, give me a sign. And I, I, I tell people to do that because if they're genuine, and I don't know if they are or not, but if they're genuine, and if they truly pray that that, that pray, prayer with a, with a genuine heart, I do believe God will do a sign to them. But it's the people who put God to the test, saying, oh, well, we need a sign. And, um, of course, Jesus uh, gave them the, the sign of the resurrection of Jonah being in the, in the in the, you know, for two, uh, three days and, and in the, in the, in the belly, right? And, uh, and uh, the sign of Jonah of the resurrection. And they had the greatest miracle ever in the history of humankind. And they still didn't believe. So it didn't matter that they were asking for signs. But the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, doubting Thomas, who, whom I like to call the questioning Thomas, because doubting is too strong of a word. The questioning, to questioning Thomas, he, I believe, was one of those who were genuine. He truly needed to see something, and when the Lord saw him, his hands with the with the, you know with the holes, he uh, um, he fell to his knees. And what did he say? My Lord and my God. I like how Jehovah's Witnesses put a, a comma in between my Lord and my God, as if somehow he's talking to two two different people. My Lord yeah. to Jesus and, and my God, Allah. And by the and, way, there are some that will argue also, and uh, uh, people might go and watch Anthony Rogers' uh, writing on that, and uh, uh, somebody who's a uh, Unitarian, uh, Unitarian uh, yeah. would argue that, oh, when Thomas was saying this, my Lord and my God, he was stating this to Yahweh who was in Christ, which yeah. is kind of funny, by the way, because yeah. Jesus says, I and the Father are one, I and the yeah. Father, the Father is me. So it's kind of like interesting. By the way, Anthony Rogers will be with me on Friday. Anthony Rogers will be with me on Friday, and there is a special guest and a special testimony by a Saudi believer who will be with me on Sunday for our special edition. Nice. In case you guys are interested in that. Hey, by the way, speaking of signs, there is someone here is asking for a sign that you did send them their T-shirt. The, uh, uh, the the one that you were wearing the other day. I guess they ordered one. I don't know. They ordered no, no, it from no, no, you, no. or they're just pulling told... your leg. I told them to send me the address. I think it was what Nigeria. Where was it? Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, Adama, Adama is asking yeah, for that. Me, we, need, we need a sign, brother. We need a sign that you sent that uh, born square, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so, so I may, I promise it, and I will do it. But Adama, send me a, there you go. It's I just, live. I just, I don't think about it now to take to court. Yeah. Uh, did you send me the address? Because I did not see the address, sister. So yeah, I think it was a sister, right? Yes, and uh, yes, send, right. send me the address because I will send it to you. I promise. So yeah, no problem. Well, I just want to tell. I want to just to tease you, brother. By no, the way, I mean, you know, I mean, what I love about my dear brother here is like you go to his uh, Facebook page and you can see pictures with so many dignitaries and presidents. And I'm waiting to see your picture with Christ. By the way, I don't know if that yeah. ever took place. You have a yes. selfie with him? Yeah, he asked me, but I told him that you know I uh, I was busy. No, just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. no. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well. If I take a selfie with Christ, then uh, it was nice knowing you, and I'll see you uh, when you die. Okay, I'll see you uh, when you die. So, uh, but uh, no, but I just uh, I love I love the Lord, and 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 I just uh, I accept His grace, you know, gladly, open-handed, and I believe that Christians uh, should be uh, really opening their hands to God's favor every day. It doesn't mean that uh, God is going to give you a Porsche, Ferrari. That's not what it's all about. It's about God, getting more of God. You come to God not to get stuff. You come to God to get God. Uh, so to get more of Him. And I just, uh, I, uh, I'm always so, uh, so excited about what God has next, you know, in my life. And I'm just so excited to be with you, brother. Um, and uh, I can't believe how time flies. It's we're having so oh, much no problem. fun. We're loving it, oh. brother. So thank you again, of course, for being here with us. And uh, I'm excited that we're doing this weekly now. And I mm -hmm. want everybody to know, you know, Alex will be with us on Wednesdays. Uh, this week, we're going to have Anthony Rogers. We're going to talk about the Trinity in Old Testament. That's the new series that it's been yeah. released, by the way, in case you didn't watch it. And mm -hmm. it's still being released, obviously. We have a special guest, a believer from Saudi, who will join me on Sunday. Yeah. And, you know, Sister Khadija will be with us periodically to talk about the woman in, uh, in Islam series. Uh, Sam Shamoun periodically will be with us. David Wood will be with us, of course, and Anthony Rogers along with Alex. But uh, Lord willing, we might have someone like Robert Spencer as well join me yeah. and also mm -hmm. Dr. Bill William, uh, uh, Bill Warner, because we're going to be doing also another live stream series on uh, 
is uh, basically political Islam. So, so these are the kind of things that uh, are in the works right now. We'll keep you posted, of course. Brother, any final words that you would like to share? And maybe we'll pick it up uh, from number 15 next time. Yeah, I'm just so excited to be with you, brother. And uh, like I said, it's been a hard couple of days since the passing of Ravi. Just makes me extremely sad. Um, but uh, it's part of life and, and, and we know where he's at. But uh, your show and spending time with you, I'm just so honored, brother, because I really was uh, the least qualified person uh, to, to be saved. And uh, so the fact... So, so the, the fact that, uh, that God saved me and that he's using me, it's just such a privilege. And I thank uh, Lord every day. And I just thank God for friends like you. I'm just uh, so proud of you, proud of your ministry. And I love what you're doing. Uh, keep doing it. And uh, uh, I just pray for you. And I just love your courage. And uh, uh, that's, that's why I just love, uh, love what God is doing in the Muslim world. Because uh, when, whenever I meet Muslims, especially radical Muslims, Saudis and, and, and other radical Muslims. I just, behind each person, I see the potential. When I meet people, I don't care where, where they're at, where have they been, where they're at. All I care is to, to try to find out in them the potential that is in Christ. And uh, because every single person is creating God's image and every single person has the potential to be a follower of Christ. And when that happens, uh, the beauty of Christianity is that the, the farther away you've been from God, the more he will transform you. It's such a beautiful, it's like a trampoline. You, the lower you've gone, the more he's going to project you into the air and use you. That's the beauty. That's why you never, you know, there, there's a parable and how Jesus says that, you know, you shouldn't cut down the trees and put them in the fire. Yet, give him a, give him a little longer. Give him a little longer because you don't know. God knows. We don't know where people are at, where they've been. And we definitely don't know where they'll be five years down the road. If you, if I had to look at the list of people I've been praying for, the people who came to Christ versus the people who didn't, uh, if I had to guess who would have come to Christ and who didn't, I would have been mostly wrong because it's God's work. It's not our work. Our work is just to share, to love on people and to share the greatest message ever told by anybody. And not only just a, 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 a story told, but, you know, there are a lot of fairy tales that are beautiful. This is not a fairy tale. This is based on, on, on uh, evidence, on facts. It's a book of history. I, I, I like to say the Bible is a, is a historical book, more, as much as a book of faith. It's a historical book. And that's why we're talking about it, because I just love the Bible, and I love the message of Christ, and not only the message, because we don't, we, we don't uh, idolize the book. We idolize the person, Christ. The, 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 the word became flesh and dwelt among us. So we uh, just love our Lord Jesus. And I just am grateful for you. I pray for you, for your family, for your safety, for everybody. And just proud of you, brother. And I love you dearly. Thank you, Thank my, you brother. my brother. And, and we want to remind everybody to please, please subscribe, subscribe to our YouTube channel. channel. Uh, Sierra International, and if the Lord put it in your heart to become a Patreon patron, we appreciate that. Uh, you have no idea how much these things can help, and also the super chat they're giving through PayPal and so on and so forth. And very soon here, we're waiting to reach a certain number of subscriptions where you can join as well and uh, and, and give that way. Uh, so thank you for for all of that you guys um, uh, do. Thank you, my brother, for your work. Thank, thank you. you for all of the moderators. Thank you for. By the way, Sinbad, I I saw your question about uh, the fact that Adam was ordained to sin. I can send you more information on that. If you like to email me, connect with me through my uh, website, sierrainternational.com. And brother, thank you so much for your time. You. We thank look you. forward and eagerly really to next week. Until thank we you. meet again, everybody, have a blessed day. Take God care. Bless. God bless you guys.